Okay, today I'm going to solve a problem that I had some questions uh, from my students. This is a problem I assigned out of this book, an introduction to Man introduction to management science by Anderson. Uh, here's the ISBN number. This is a book I use in my quantitative methods class. It's like a senior level class I teach. Uh, pretty good book, and I just wanted to give the reference to where I got this problem from. So let's read the problem. It says the reorder point. C equation 10.6, which is this equation right here, uh, is defined as the lead time demand for an item. Um, so this gives you the number, uh, the inventory you have to have, the minimum inventory you have to have before you can reorder. Okay. Uh, in cases of long lead times, which is the M, um, the reorder point may exceed the economic order quantity. In such cases, the inventory position will not equal the inventory on hand when the order is placed. And the reorder point may be expressed either in terms of inventory position or inventory on hand. Um, consider the economic order quantity with uh, D, which is annual demand of 5,000, and uh, C sub O, which is a cost per order of 32, and C sub H, the cost for holding one unit for a whole year is two dollars, and we're going to we're going to say we have two hundred working days per year, two hundred fifty working days per year, and we want to and we want to find the reorder point in terms of inventory position and inventory hand for each of the following lead times. So what they mean by lead time is if I here's a lead time if I order order a product. It's going to take five days for it to get in. If I order a product, it's going to take 15 days or 45 days to get in. So um, go ahead and if you want to pause the video, I'm trying to save some time. Pause the video and type this in so 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 you can use it when I start solving it. If you want to follow along with me or just watch whatever you want to do. But if you want to follow along and do it with me, type this in at this time. Pause it and then type it in. Okay, so those of you that typed it in, we can go ahead and start. Um, so the first thing we want to do for the solution is we want to find out the economic order quantity. Okay, so the economic order quantity is what they're talking about here, um, and and we'll call that uh, Q star. And this is the quantity which which minimizes. This is the order quantity which minimizes the total cost. Okay, uh, and basically that formula comes from some calculus. I'm not going to, it's beyond the scope of what I'm going to show you right here, but this is the formula after you use a little bit of calculus, and it's equal to the square root, oops, it's equal to the square root of, I'm going I'm, I'm to have habit, even though I don't always have to, I'm in the habit of always putting the numerator and denominator in parentheses if it's got more than one term. So in the parentheses, I'm going to say 2 times d times c sub 0, close the parentheses in the numerator and divide it by c sub h, and then close the parentheses for the square root. So my optimal order quantity is 400 units, okay? Uh, so, or economic order quantity. So that's what we call this. This is called the economic order quantity, okay? Um, so the next thing we want to do, we want to use this formula here that we just talked about. Uh, we want to calculate the reorder point. What inventory do I, at what point is the minimum, when I reach a certain number of units on stock, when do I need to reorder in order to not run out of stock? Because if it takes five days and, well, I'll, let's make sense, more sense in a second. So we're, we that, that's in order to calculate R, which is the reorder point, you need a demand per day times M. Well, we don't have the demand per day, so we have to calculate demand. We have M up here, right? We have M for the different days. But up here, we don't have small d, which is demand per day. So we need to calculate demand per day. So demand per day is equal to, well, let's think about this. The annual demand is 5,000, right? So we could say it's equal to 5,000 units. And then how many working days we have? 250. 
So 5,000 yeah, units on the numerator, days on the denominator because I'm dividing, right? So that's equal to Twenty units per day. Okay, so that's called the demand per day. Here, let me let me move this over, and let me put the formula here. Okay, uh, so now we can calculate R. Now R happens to be what they're asking for. Is this a kind of a fancy way? They want the re reorder term, order term, order point in both inventory position and inventory on hand well, inventory position is what they're talking about um let me let me copy this little de definition that's out of the book now that we know how much to order which is this right we want to address when to order this answers this question we need to get introduce the concept of inventory position position the inventory position is defined defined as the amount of inventory on hand plus the amount of inventory on order so that's basically what we want to have okay so i'm going to put an m the lead time in days and then we'll put in the inventory position and we'll call that's actually r okay so let me let me move this out a little bit so we have that. All right, so we already have the lead time and days right here. So I'm just going to copy this down. Another way you could do it, I could just go equals this and then copy it down this way. I kind of like to do it that way because that way if I change, change these, then these will change automatically. So the inventory position, that's R, right? And it's equal to D times N. So it's going to be equal to this D that I calculated above. Now, I want to think about this because I'm going to copy this down. So I'm going to go ahead and hit, hit, hit F4, which puts dollar signs in front of these. Now, if I don't hit, four, hit F4, I could also type the dollar signs. And then I want to, do, and I want to take that times 5. Now, I, don't want that to, I want that to move as I copy it down. I want it to stay here when I copy it down. I don't want it to go to here, to here, to here. So I want that to be absolute, but I want these to be relative, so I don't have to put F4. And then, so this is the amount of inventory I need to have on hand at the time, and on order at the time, at this lead time, okay, in order to not run out of stock. Okay, so let me put this equation in here. All right, so now we want to say uh, is R less than or equal to Q star. Okay, um, so we want to know is this number less than this? Now we could say it manually, but I like to do use Excel to figure it out, and we're going to use an if function and an if function is something that performs a logical task and returns one value if it's true another if it's false now I'm going to show you how that works so I'm going to say equals if so I want to ask this question if this is less than or equal to whoops if this is less than or equal to this now I'm going to hit F4 on this because I'm going to copy this formula down and I always want to look at that. What do I want to do if it's less than or equal to? Well, I'm going to say yes because they're asking a question. If this is less than this, say yes. That's what the question is, right? If it's not less than this, we'll say no. And I have to put it in parentheses, so uh, that's just the way Excel works. Okay, I have to make, put it in quotation marks. And then I can copy that down. And you could have done that, like I say, you could have done this manually, but I always like to have Excel do things because if it's a real long spreadsheet or things change, it does it automatically. So this is so so this is less than 400, and this is less than 400, so yes. This is greater than 400, and this is greater than 400, so it's no. 
Okay, so now finally, we can calculate the on-hand inventory reorder point, which is the second thing it's asking for here. The on-hand inventory reorder point. So I'll go ahead and type this in here, on-hand. So this is a little bit confusing. So we have to ask the question, if my lead time, I'm not going to have reordered anything because my optimum order quantity is 400. So I'm going to reorder 400 when my inventory gets down to 100. So the way I could say it is, okay, how can I explain this? And these two, like this one, my inventory position, I need five, I need to have 500 either coming in or in stock, right? At, in order to not stock out because my lead time is 25 days. So if I have my inventory is 500 coming in or in stock, well, I've already ordered, I would already have had to order 400 because remember, I want to order 400 every time. I would have already had to order 400 at least once. So what would I have left? My, my inventory position would be 100. And here, I would have had to order 400 at least twice. And I'd still have an inventory position or an inventory on hand inventory reorder point of 100 because I'd have two orders coming in. Because remember, this is my economic order quantity. So the way I could do this on Excel, I could use something called the mod function. Okay. So the mod function returns the remainder of two division numbers after division. For example, mod 10, 3 equals 1. Because 3 goes into 10 three times with a remainder of 1. So it basically gives the remainder. And that's the perfect thing for this to calculate the, this right here. And I'm going to show you how that works. So I could say equals if this equals uh, yes. Well, I'm just going to, my inventory position is going to be the same as, my on-hand inventory reorder point is going to be the same as my inventory position. If not, it's going to be the modulus, and it wants the number and the divisor. So the number is this, and comma, the divisor is this. Now I'm going to F4 this because I have to copy it down again, and I don't want it to move from that. And close the parentheses twice. And it still gives me 100. So if I copy this down, it's going to give me the correct answer. All right. So let me copy, paste. So now I've answered my question. Um, this is the answer to the first part. And this is the answer to the second part. So just, just to clarify, I'm going to put two little uh, statements in here. Uh, So let me insert shapes. Insert shapes. Okay, so one order of Q star is outstanding, right? Because we have 500. The on-hand inventory is 500 minus 400. Now this modulus Divided 400 into 500 and left the remainder 100. That's how I got the 100. And in this case, there's 900. So there's two orders of 400 outstanding with 100 left over. So I use the modulus. Um, 400 goes into 900 two times and there's a 100 left over. So anyway, hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Uh, the book doesn't explain this very well. So I understand why students might have problems with it. So I'm not going to uh, attach a spreadsheet for this because I want you, my students to do this on their own. So I want to see their handwork. So I don't want to uh, make it too easy where they're just copying my spreadsheet. So anyway, uh, if you like this video, I'm going to have my picture come up here. Uh, click, on, uh, click on that. Hopefully you subscribe. Also like it if you like it. Uh, subscribing helps me out because I'm trying to reach 1,000 subscribers. YouTube quit paying me. Since I don't have a thousand subscribers, they change your policy. So anyway, that's it. Thank you.